name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Abba Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord Jesus. For this another opportunity, Lord, that you have given to us. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for this time that we have gathered over here to spend with your word, Lord. As we have gathered over here today, you teach us, O Lord, you guide us, you lead us. You reveal to us the secrets, the mysteries of your kingdom. Lord, let it be everything of you spoken unto us. And nothing of our own knowledge, nothing of our own understanding. Lord, you speak to us, you guide us, you lead us, you reveal to us the secrets, the mysteries of your kingdom. Lord, it is your word which is what is transforming and changing our lives forever. And Lord, as today it is your word, we make sure, Lord, to believe your word because, Lord, we want to know you. We want to have a relationship with you. We want to understand your word. We want to understand the word of God which you have given to us. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for all the good things that you have done, the great things that you are doing, and all the greater things that are yet to come. And Lord, we believe, Lord, that we are in the right place at the right time, doing the right thing with the right people, O oh Lord Jesus, because we are blessed, blessed to reach to the nations. We are anointed with your word, O oh Lord Jesus, and it is your word which is changing our life forever, Lord, because, Lord, today we are standing with the right standing with you. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray, Abba Father. Amen, amen, amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise God. And hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Okay. Praise God. Okay, let's go back to John chapter 15. John chapter 15, verse 13. Okay, I'm um, sorry, John thirteen fifteen. This call. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Okay. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Okay, now the God of hope, I'm reading it. Oh, okay, I have to share the screen. Now the God of hope fills you with all joy and peace in believing that you may abound in hope through the power of the Holy Ghost. So here he's saying, now the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing. It is the God of hope which is filling us with all joy and is filling us with all peace in believing. That you may abound in hope. Today we are abounding in hope. And because we are abounding in hope, that is one of the reasons why Today, we are able to live according to the word of God. We are able to live according to the truth of God's word. Because today, we have the right standing with God. We have the relationship with God. And that's why he's saying, now the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing. That means what? That means it is the God, of the, it is God who's filling us with this joy and this peace. Some translation says, the Bible says, God is filling us with his joy and peace to such an extent where we start overflowing with joy and peace. In believing. Where we are overflowing with joy, we are overflowing with uncontainable joy and in the perfect peace in believing. Now here, what the scripture is trying to say is, if we want to believe God, 
the only way the, the the true believing comes only when we have joy and peace now if we are allowing holy spirit to work in our life okay it may look like your own you know many a times you know what happens and people say this people say um you're not worried you're not worried about your exam you're not worried about your family you're not worried about this and worried about that because in this world you know many people think worrying means responsibility for some weird reason many people think worried means being responsible if you're worried about something that means you're being responsible for it but never in the bible did jesus say or did god say that if you're worried that means you're responsible wherever jesus went he went and he preached and he said that this this worry was not is not a showing of your responsibility but this worry is actually demonic and that's why the bible says that jesus was giving us a direct commandment and saying do not worry do not worry we are not supposed to be worried and and that's why many times what stops us believing in joy and peace is doubt is um is fear is unbelief is worry okay now as i was saying if we are allowing the holy spirit to work in our life from the outside it may look like a responsibility but from the but but, but actually from the word of god from the inside you are dependent on the holy ghost you are responsible because you be leaving to the whole, it means many people think from outside the responsibility is what you do but today it's the responsibility what what we need to do is to be dependent on god and dependent on his word okay and the more we are dependent on god and the more we are responsible saying lord i believe holy spirit i believe that i've said the word i've said the right word and it is you who's bringing it to pass when a person starts believing in that word and he starts saying that now that means he's no longer dependent on his own strength or his own ability but now he is dependent on god's strength god's ability god's authority now he is focused completely on god's word so one the, the one most important thing which we need to understand in our life is that our focus needs to be fixed our attention needs to be fixed on to god's word now if our attention is not fixed on to god's word then we will go around okay we we we, we will go around looking for a, a solution to our problem we will go around looking for an answer to our problem but instead of finding the answer we are just living under sin we are just living under bondage we are just living under bitterness that is taking us to the place of death which is taking us to the place of death now one thing we need to understand is that our focus needs to be completely fixed on to god's word because if we are not keeping our attention on god's word then what is around us will be more important to us rather than what god's word has said to us so what is around me will be more it, it, it will start ruling my life rather than what the word of god says will not will 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 not will no longer rule our life so one thing the one thing that we need to understand is that our focus and our attention needs to be kept completely on the word of god in instead of focusing on the lies because the, the one thing that the devil is good at is bringing lies so what will he do every day in our life bring lies bring thoughts that contradict god's word so one thing we need to understand is that our focus and our attention needs to be completely 
uh, fixed with God's word rather than the devil's word. Because it's very important today that in our lives, we are not giving our attention or we are not giving our, our focus onto the lies and the thoughts and the strongholds of the devil. But today we, we, we keep our focus on God's word. We keep our focus on the truth of God's word. And that's what takes us. That's what leads us to the place of victory. That's what leads us to now this believing. This believing through faith. This believing with trust. And, and, and this believing, okay, understanding. Because now we have the joy and peace of God on the inside of me. So this joy and peace is very important. If a person does not have this joy and peace, okay, then that person will not be able to see God's word in their life because they're not believing correctly. Many a times, one of the reasons why many people don't experience God's word in their life is because they have not believed correctly. So what is God telling us to do? Believe correctly. How do you believe correctly? Only when you start having a relationship with Jesus. Only when you start understanding and having a relationship with the word of God. And when you start having this relationship with the word of God, when you start having this relationship with Jesus, now this relationship, this relationship is what changes the life of a person today. Because now we have made the choice, we have made the decision, we have uh, made, made, made the decision to do what? To keep our focus and our attention fixed onto God's word rather than any lie of the devil. The, yes, you know, according to the Bible, the Bible says there will be lies, there will be thoughts, there will be things that the devil brings in our life. But instead of focusing on what the devil is trying to bring in our life, our focus much more needs to be on what God's word says about me and what God's word is bringing in my life. Praise God. So it's very important now to be in perfect peace and joy because if we are not experiencing this joy and peace, let me tell you something. We will not be able to experience anything what the Lord has done. We will be living bare lives. We will be living empty lives. We will be living lives that, 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 that are demonic. That are demonic. And, and, and they don't bring a good impact on people. They bring a demonic act on a demonic impact on the people. And that's when now you are not being a big blessing to the nations. You are being a curse to the nations. You know why a person becomes a curse to the nations? Because his focus is not on God's word. His focus is on himself. You know, one of the reasons why many people are a curse to the nations is because of their own pride. Pride, God never told us to operate in pride. It's demonic, it comes from Satan. But many people are operating in pride today. And because they're operating in pride, that is one of the reasons why today you see many people, they are being a curse to the nations. Because they're much more focused on, on themselves rather than the others. And, 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 and the devil, you know, one of the reasons why this happens, one of the reasons why uh, many people... Um, they are, they are a curse to the nations just because the devil has brought a lie and the devil is making them. See, whatever lie the devil brings, the devil will always bring that lie so that you are focused on your own self. Okay, every lie is meant for you to be focused on your own self. And that is one of the reasons why, that is one of the reasons why today in our life, we are experiencing unbelief. You know why we are experiencing unbelief? Because of pride. Even though God has not told any one of us to operate in this pride, we are still operating in pride. Pride is demonic. And, and many of us, including me, have wasted our time, all this time that we had, living in pride. Living in pride, living in self-centeredness. We, we, and, and a person who's a curse to the nation is because the Bible says, love one another as I have loved you. But that, when you start loving one another and 
you start giving the word to them, that's when you are a blessing to the nations. But when you are a curse to the nations, now you are not giving the word to them, but you are more focused about yourself. And now, because you are focused about yourself, now that you are believed a lie, when you are focused about yourself, you are just trying to exalt yourself to others and tell about everything about yourself. Now, one of the ways, one of the ways we uh, we we express pride to people without trying to promote ourselves is through fear. Okay, let me give an example. Let's say A and B are there, and A and B are talking, and A says, uh, "I have heard of this virus." Okay. Uh, let's say before COVID-19 started, let's say I heard of the BAA is saying, I heard of this virus and I am so scared, I am so fearful that this virus might, might attack me. I am trying to take care of most of my family and of myself and I'm not going anywhere out. I send another family out, a family member who can who's willing to go out and they do do the shopping and they do bring the groceries, but I'm not stepping out of the house. Now, where's all your focus? Are you focused on the benefit of others, or are you focused on I, me? When the person, when, when A is talking to B, he's not focused about uh, 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 on about B telling B, you know, there is this virus, just be careful, okay? It might, uh, uh, it, it might come, just be careful, okay? Is he telling B that way? If A would have said to B, you know what, I've heard this virus, just take a bit of caution because I don't want your family and you to be sick. Now, was A focusing on himself or was A focusing on others? Others, others. Now, this is just a normal example without the word of God. With the word of God, what God is telling us to do is, there's not supposed to be any pride. When love comes, love is always being focused on others, being focused on the good of others. And that's a very important part. Being focused on the good of others. The, 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 uh, the, the benefit that your life can be to others. That's what the Bible says. Now, let's see an example of this. Let's go to Acts chapter 7, verse 54, 55. Seven. Fifty. Um, 54, see that when they heard these things, they were cut to the heart and they gnashed on him with their teeth. Does anyone know who was this him? Anyone? Anyone who like Paul? Paul? No, it was not Paul. It was um, a disciple called Stephen. Okay, Stephen. Now, uh, if you see in verse number 59, it says Stephen, and they stoned Stephen. So his, uh, his name was Stephen, okay? He was a disciple, and um, see, see what he's saying. When they heard these things, they cut to the heart, and they gnashed on him with their teeth. But he, being full of the Holy Ghost, looked up, looked up steadfastly into heaven, and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing on the right hand of God. Now, Stephen is seeing this. He is full of the Holy Spirit. He is looking up at them steadfastly into heaven. And he's seeing the glory of God and Jesus standing on the right hand of God. And said, now he is saying to those people, okay, over there. Behold, now, now, now here Stephen was preaching the word of God. He was preaching, a, preaching the gospel. And here now, uh, the, the higher authorities and uh, things like that have, made, have took the decision to stone Stephen to death. So this is when they are uh, go, uh, going to stone him. 
and he is not focused on them going to stone him he is saying i see the heavens open and the son of man standing on the right hand of god okay and then they cried out with a loud voice and stepped there and stopped their ears and ran with him with one accord i ran upon him with one accord and cast him out of the city and stoned him and stoned him so 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 what happened here okay because um stephen was preaching the word of god they 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 took these they 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 they, they took of stephen and he, they they took, they took him to stone they went out of the city okay and stoned him uh, verse number 58 let me just scroll down and stoned him and wit- and the witnesses laid down their clothes at a young man's feet whose name was Saul now the reason of stephen's death one of the reason was you know who it was Saul Saul who became Paul it was Saul who was because because before he became Paul what was he doing persecuting the church what was he doing um persecuting the people who believed in Jesus and that's what is happening over here okay even even when um, Stephen is being stoned to death it was all because of Saul okay and see what he's saying in 59 and he stoned Stephen they stoned stephen calling upon god and saying lord jesus receive my spirit and he kneeled down and cried with a loud voice lord lay not this sin to their charge and when he said this he fell asleep means in other words when he said this he died now even at the very last moment of his life was he focused on himself no he was telling the lord not to lay the sin the sin of not uh, not allowing the people of god to preach the gospel lord don't lay them sin to their charge means don't punish them for this sin and it was that prayer that in acts chapter 8 or 9 one chapter um, one chapter or two chapter forward you see that because of what stephen was saying here you see saul turned into paul and paul did the same thing what stephen was doing instead of being the persecutor he now started being an apostle he received jesus he believed in jesus and he went around preaching the word of god giving the good news and now paul was a big blessing to the nations okay paul, paul the the you know according to the bible paul okay paul had written a quarter of the bible itself a quarter of the bible all the letters that paul wrote was all you know you know one theme the one theme i see when paul when paul was preaching was everything he does he says to the people don't be focused on yourself be focused on jesus in other words don't operate in pride operate in humility focusing on jesus that is very important and that's why saying we and they stone stephen calling upon god and saying lord jesus receive my spirit at the very last moment also he was saying he was focused he was not trying to say lord i'm dying what should i do try to save me oh lord jesus try to save me lord why is he standing there at the right hand of the father jesus come save me he didn't say that he was ready ready to be martyred for christ because his focus was not on himself his focus was on Christ he knew that if he would have been martyred for Christ today okay it it, it it would not be it would not mean that it would end he was ready because he knew his life was not created by himself his life was created by god now i am supposed to give thanks to god so i am not focused on my death i am not focused on me dying i am focused on the people around me being saved and they doing the same work that god um, god, god called me to do where they are going out preaching the word of god giving the go- good news and they are transforming the lives of so many people and they also are blessed to be the blessing to the nations 
that attitude of Stephen was not pride, it was humility. One of the reasons why we struggle to believe is because of pride. Because you know how pride comes? Unbelief. Unbelief. You know how humility comes? Believing. Believing through joy and peace. Here Stephen was believing. He knew. He believed. He believed that the Lord will not stop there. He knew that the Lord had a plan. And because he knew, he believed in the Lord. Praise God. The one most important thing that we need to understand today, okay, through this session is that we are not supposed to be operating in pride but in humility. Because pride leads to doubt. But humility, pride leads to doubt. Pride leads, uh, pride leads to unbelief. And when I say pride leads to unbelief, actually what is the right term is unbelief leads to pride. But believing in the word of God, trusting with the word of God, understanding what the word of God is saying to our life personally, where God is speaking to us and saying that he has blessed us to be the blessing to the nations, that he has anointed us to be the big, big blessing to the word of God. Now we are supposed to start believing in the word of God. When we start believing in the word of God, we will start experiencing God's word in our life. Praise God. So the one most important thing in our life today, you know what it, what is it? Understanding and start operating in humility. It's not too late. We are supposed to operate in humility. Don't focus on ourselves. We're not supposed to focus on ourselves. We are focused on others and how we can change the people around us. How we, we can, and when I say we can change, we're not supposed to force them to change, but God has given us the word. And it's we who need to be preaching the word of God that even if they are not ready to believe, they still have the chance to change their life. Even if they don't want to take the chance, they still have the chance. And I say it's better, it's better that you do, you have the chance, but you are not choosing rather than you're not choosing because you don't have a chance. Right? Yeah. Praise God. So are you understanding any questions, any doubts? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Okay, anyone, any questions? Anyone would like to ask anything, share anything, add anything? Praise God. Okay, praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Okay, praise God. Um, thank you, Jesus. Okay. Um, so today we'll pray for those with them. Um, what is that? Today we'll pray for those with any type of people, okay, any type of people who have any problem with their um, uh, spine, okay, because um, sometimes they have um, back pain, but not only back pain, back pain, sometimes their spine is not straight because of some in, 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 in malfunction in the body. So we'll pray for those people, okay. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Abba Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for the word that you have given to us. Thank you, Lord Jesus. For the truth, Lord, that you have given to us, Lord, we believe, Lord, that your word is what is setting us free from every lie of the devil. Lord, as we have come here today, Lord, as one accord in the spirit, here to keep our focus on you, here to study your word. Lord, I bind every spirit of infirmity that is coming against the spine when the person's spine is not straight. It's uh, disaligned or the bones are disaligned in the spine. I uproot it. I curse it. I cast it out in the name of Jesus. Never again to return into our life in the name of Jesus, into that person's life. Wherever that person may be in the world, Lord, or whoever it may be, how many ever people, Lord, who are suffering from this, whether they are in the hospital, whether they are in their home, whether they are trying to go to a doctor, Lord, we believe, Lord, that they are completely healed. Their spine is completely straight and normal in Jesus' name. And we believe, Lord, for 100% healing. In Jesus' name we pray, Abba Father. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. 
Praise God. Okay, hallelujah. Okay. Um, thank you, Jesus. Um, tomorrow we'll pray for those people, okay, who um who 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 are trying to get um education, but they're not able to get the education because they're not able to they don't have enough money, they're poor, or, or they're trying to get some clothes, but they don't have the money, or they're trying to get food, but they don't have the money and they're starving and they're hungry, or they're or they don't have the water and they're drinking. Um the, the water from the rivers and things like that. We'll pray for those people tomorrow. So uh, you, you can come here tomorrow, praise God. And if you know anyone who's poor, not able to get education from your family, if a person is not able to get education or a person is um, trying to beg for money but uh, or something like that, you can tell them to come, praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Okay, thank you, Lord. Uh, we'll close with the ending prayer. Okay, praise God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord, for bringing us here once again in one accord, here to learn your word, here to be humble, here to keep our focus on you. Lord, we want to learn more about you. We want to be the reflection of your word, reflection of you. Lord, we want the world to see that we are the reflection, Lord. And not, Lord, to boast about ourselves saying that we are able to experience healing manifestation. But, Lord, to boast about you that it is you who has healed us. You who has given the manifestation. You who has delivered us. Lord, we make the decision to believe your word today. And because, Lord, it is your word which is transforming our life completely. Lord, we make the decision to walk to live and to talk and to and to go under the word of God to believe the word of God because it is the word of God which is transforming our lives forever. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, we pray, our Father. Amen. 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 Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Okay, we'll pray in tongues. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Okay, so thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you all for joining today's session. Uh, thank you for participating. See you all tomorrow. As I said, if you know anyone who's poor or can't get education or if you want a, a, a person, okay, you can, a person who doesn't uh, have, uh, okay, doesn't know how to read and write, you can call that person here tomorrow. We will pray for them. We will agree with them. Praise God. Okay, so thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you all for joining. See you all tomorrow. Have a blessed day. Have, have a blessed day at school. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you, Ritanti. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 B